Hello everyone, my name is Rodrigo and I will present our work about how to tackle 4D panoptic segmentation in an end-to-end -end manner. In the context of self-driving cars, spatial-temporal scene understanding is crucial to navigate the environment. The task of 3D panoptic segmentation aims to segment the scene and also identify other agents, which means performing 3D semantic and 3D instant segmentation together. 4D panoptic segmentation extends this task to the temporal domain. This means tackling 3D semantic segmentation and 3D instance segmentation consistent over time. So far, previous approaches follow, for example, the tracking by detection paradigm and first segment each individual scan and then in a post-processing step they associate the detected instances over time. Other approaches aggregate input scans using the uh, vehicle poses to compensate for the ego motion and then use clustering to obtain 4D prediction for these short sequences of two, of two or three scans which they later also associate together in a post-processing step. So far previous approaches optimize for proxy tasks and rely on post-processing steps like clustering or association between predictions. They usually require fine-tuning for the clustering or, for example, to combine motion and appearance information in the instance association. We propose, on the other hand, tackling the task in an end-to-end -end manner, jointly optimizing for segmentation and association, and getting rid of the post-processing step. Let's first see how we tackle 3D panoptic segmentation. We formulate the task as the prediction of a set of non-overlapping binary masks and semantic classes, which we combine to obtain the final panoptic segmentation. In this context, each mask represents either an instance, like a car, or a whole staff class, like road. To perform 3D panoptic segmentation, we start from the input scan and use an encoder-decoder architecture with sparse convolutions to extract point-wise features. We use a set of learnable queries, which are learnable feature vectors, as mask proposals. We refine these queries in a transformer decoder through cross-attention and self-attention, combining these ways, this way the queries with the point features we extracted earlier. After re the refinement of these mask proposals, we obtain for each output query a binary mask and a semantic class, segmenting this way the whole scan. It's important to remember that in this context, the queries are learnable feature vectors, randomly initialized, that are also optimized during the training process. They act as mask proposals, representing a single mask. To train our approach for 3D panoptic segmentation, we first obtain for each query a binary mask and a semantic class. To optimize now the predictions, we have to match them with a ground truth mask. In order to do this, we use the Hungarian algorithm to match the most similar ground truth and prediction, and then we compute for each one of these pairs two losses, one to maximize the mask similarity and another for the semantic class. So far we have seen how to tackle 3D panoptic segmentation. Let's, not, let's now add the temporal domain to this task and move to 4D. In our approach, for the first scan, we do the same as the 3D version because we're not yet tracking anything. We combine point features and learnable queries in the decoder to then, in the end, obtain for each query a mask and a semantic class, this way segmenting the whole scan. For the next scans, we are now tracking instances that we segmented before. So you, we use the set, same set of learnable queries, but we also concatenate the queries that segmented instances in the previous scan. For example, the red query that, is, that segmented the red car and the yellow for the pedestrian. When segmenting the new scan, this allows us to perform tracking, because the same query always segments the same instance. For example, this red query is always segmenting the red car. We call these queries tracking queries, because they're indeed tracking some instances. And the rest of the queries, we call them detection queries, and they will uh, segment the new appearing instances and the staff classes. To train our approach, we feed a sequence of scans. For the first scan, we are not tracking anything, and therefore we perform the same supervision as in the 3D case. We first obtain for each query 
a binary mask and a semantic class, and then to match them with the ground truth, uh, to match each ground truth with the prediction, we use a, the Hungarian algorithm. And once we have all the pairs, we compute the two loss functions for the, to optimize the mask and the semantic class. In the next scans, we are tracking instances that we segmented before. So we have both sets of detection and tracking queries. And we want to also here maximize the similarity between the tracking queries and the instances they are tracking. For example, again, the red car that is tracking uh, the red query that is tracking the red car. To do this, we first match the tracking queries with the instances they detected before and optimize for the mask and for the class. Then we remove these predictions and this ground truth, and for the rest, we use a Hungarian algorithm that will, in this case, uh, match the, new, the, the remaining ground truth with the remaining predictions to basically be able to segment the new appearing instances and the staff masks. And again, here, for each pair, we optimize for mask and for class. Here are some qualitative results of our approach. On the left, we can see 3D semantic segmentation, where we do not differentiate between instances of the same class, and we assign a color to each point representing its class. On the right, we see 3D instance segmentation, where we only color the instances representing its instance ID, and we can see that the instance IDs are indeed consistent over time. As a summary, our method achieves end-to-end -end 4D panoptic segmentation without the need of any post-processing step and allows us to directly optimize for segmentation and association. We do not need any handcrafted fusion of information like appearance or motion and motion, and we also do not need any clustering step. To, know, to get to know more about our work, we, you can check the paper and also the implementation. And thank you for your attention.